hurt people hurt people. Now, that's a quote that's been said throughout history, right? You've probably seen it on the internet. You've probably heard it from your parents. But the truth of the matter is, is that for someone to cause another person pain, there has to be something inside of them that's hurting. Because that's not our natural state. If you think about it from as young as you can remember, or even if you have children, little babies in the home or in your, in your life, they don't just decide to be negative or hurt someone. What they normally do is react to something that's going on in their life. So they may hurt you because they're in need of food. They may cry because they're in need of food or they may squeeze your hand or something like that. But the bottom line is that we learn that as humans, we're all born out of love. I don't care what you believe in or, or who you believe in, but the bottom line is that we're all born out of love. So when you go to the extent of hurting somebody, you need to check yourself and figure out what is it about me right now that causes me pain so much to the extent that I'm going to cause someone else pain. It could even be a situation where you've gone off on somebody. Maybe they were the teller at the local bank or a clerk at a store. And because you were a little impatient or maybe there were some other things going on in your life, you took it out on that person. Same thing with them. If they have disrespected you or given you an attitude, it's a good chance that something's going on in their life that they're not satisfied with. Because one thing we know is hurt people hurt people. Now we're in chapter nine of the sacraments. We're in chapter nine of the cycle breaker where we're talking about the causes of pain. So there are several causes of pain and I'm not gonna profess that I've hit on every single one of them in this book, but I have identified some causes of pain that we can all recognize as happening pretty much often in our lives. So I'm looking at the book, the first cause of pain, I have ignorance as a cause of pain. And if you follow me through the book, and this is chapter nine, ignorance comes in various forms and from various places. One such place is through the inheritance from your biological environment. Now, why is that important? That's important because look, none of us, well, maybe not some of us, I am definitely not, am not from a very affluent environment. I grew up in the hood, my, my life was shaped by the hood and I still live in, in East Cleveland where I'm trying to change the narrative of what the hood can offer and what you can bring and be coming out of the hood, right? So not all of us have grown up in this silver spoon environment where everything has been perfect. But what happens is the environment can cause or delay the growth of our intelligence, right? So if all you're used to hearing is people fighting and screaming and arguing on your street, you're going to grow up communicating that way. Or if everybody in your house is using drugs, getting drunk, you know, partying, never thinking about education, you're going to be limited in that way. So when we talk about your biological environment and how that adds to or causes ignorance, I'm not trying to be hard on anybody. I'm not trying to dog anybody out or say that, that one life is more perfect than the other. All I'm saying is that you have to look around you and you have to be realistic about the people around you. Are they seekers? Remember that word? Are they seekers of education? Are they seekers of positivity? How do you know that? Well, are they reading? Are they talking about issues that can change the world or issues that are affecting world policy? Or are they gossiping about so-and-so down the street and what they did last night? Are they negative in the sense that every time you talk to them about your goals, your dreams, your desires, they don't want to talk about that. Instead, what they want to do is focus on the issues that have nothing to do with success. So that's how you take a gauge of your environment and determine whether or not your environment is adding to your ignorance. Because ignorance in and of itself is a source of pain. Now, what do I mean by that? If you don't know what's going on in this world, if you are oblivious to what it takes to be successful, there's a cost to that. And with that cost, there comes pain. So when we blow off school in our early ages and, and don't want to go to school or you drop out like some of us have done, that will cause a certain level of pain whether you realize it now or later. So maybe it's fun to drop out and cut class right now because that feels good and that's what you want to do. But later on, when you hit your 30s and 40s and you're trying to advance in your career and you can't check the box that says you have a high school diploma, that's going to cause some pain. 
or when you're trying to move forward in life and trying to reach that top of the edge and go even beyond and you realize that you have limitations in the way that you can even effectively communicate with people. That's an ignorance that's going to cause some pain. So look, I'm not trying to disrespect anybody because you know, if you know me, you know that's not where I come from. But I do want to be honest about the fact that when there's ignorance, that causes pain. Let me give you another example. Have you ever heard the statement, ignorance of the law is no excuse? And where do you think that comes from? And what do you think that means? Well, basically what it means is that the fact that you don't know what's going on, the fact that you don't know that you're breaking the law, that is not an excuse. And that's not going to get you off. So you can't stand before me in the courtroom and say, hey, Judge Dawson, I didn't know that I can't drive without a valid license. Well, that's the law. And your ignorance of the law is no excuse. The same thing applies to your success and reaching your level of success. Ignorance will cause a certain type of pain because it can't be an excuse and it's going to limit what you do and how you do it. So when you're walking in a certain direction and you don't realize that there's a dead end at the end, when you hit that dead end, there's going to be some pain. But the reason you didn't know it was there is because there was a little bit of ignorance to that regard. So ignorance will cause pain. Going back to the book. Jay used this as an example. I know that it sounds a bit harsh, but it's true. Inheritance, by its very nature, is a deep root that takes a lot of persistence and power to break. You see that small tree out your window right under the light? He planted that tree last year and it took five hours to dig the hole where that tree sits. Underneath the ground, there were roots that were coming out in every direction. So as he tried to break ground to build the new tree, he ran into roots that were already there from an old tree. You couldn't see the tree anymore. The tree was knocked down, but the roots were still in the ground. And what that basically means is where you are grounded, what you learn in the very beginning, the early stages of your life, it's going to stay there. It's going to get so deeply rooted that when you want to change and you want to bring about new information and new ideas, it's going to take a lot of work, a lot of work to remove those deep rooted beliefs and those thoughts. What are some of those deep rooted beliefs and thoughts? Well, they could be your thoughts about money. How do you feel about money? Do you feel that only hustlers get rich? And if you do, that's going to cause you to pick a certain lifestyle, right? A certain career, a certain endeavor so that you can make money. Or do you believe that money is the root of all evil? And if you believe that, then that may affect the way you go about making money. Or even if you do go about making money, or maybe you'll exist in a state of poverty. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with poverty because there's different ways to level and to grade your level of prosperity and abundance. Financial, that's just one level. You know, there's spiritual, there's relational, there's emotional. So we're not just talking about money and having money. I'm talking about your ideas against or for certain things. Those are the things that are rooted deep within you. Let's go to another one. How do you feel about relationships? If you're a lady, do you feel that all men cheat? Because maybe you've seen cheating go on in your relationships and your mother's relationship, and your auntie's relationship. So now your ideal of a good relationship is a man who doesn't cheat that much. And that's what you go after. Same thing with, with men. Have you said all women are hoes? And I'm just keeping it real. Maybe that's because of the situation that you found yourself in where some young lady was taken advantage of. She didn't even realize it. Now she's living outside of her greatness. You run into her and now you're laboring her or labeling her a hoe. And so now, because that's what you've been dealing with, that's what you expect. So it's important for you to gauge what roots have you dug so deep in your existence, so deep in your psyche that it's going to be hard for you to break out of it. So Jay's example was talking about the tree that was outside and how long it took him to dig the roots up. Pause.
Back on. Continuing with our book. Jay continued talking to the young man in the cycle breaker camp and he said, as I said, ignorance comes from specific places. It also comes in different forms. One form of ignorance is the obvious one. That's lack of education. And you and I have already talked about that. But Jay goes on to say that the lack of education creates a lack of opportunity. Lack of opportunity creates pain. And it's that pain being ignorant to the importance of education and the opportunities that education presents that will keep you spinning in and out of bad situations. So keep in mind, when we talk about sources of pain, right now we're talking about number one through the cycle breaker camp. We're talking about ignorance and why we have to fight against ignorance. And I'm gonna tell you something, it doesn't matter where you are right now. I don't care if you dropped out of high school five years ago, 10 years ago, or yesterday. You can still regain your intelligence. Even if you're not going to get your GED, you can decide that you want to have a grasp of information so that you're able to hold intelligent conversations. A grasp of information so that you're able to maneuver in and out of specific jobs and things that you want. So you don't have to settle for any type of ignorance. Right now, today, you can make a decision to get back on track, to regain your power, to regain your ability to go for your furthest, highest, most demanding goals that you have because you can achieve them. All you have to do is put your mind to it. The second cause of pain, individuality. Individuality as a cause of pain. The pursuit of, individu the pursuit of individuality can cause pain. This world has become such a look at me generation. I mean, think about it. We have Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat and all these other devices and all these other platforms where it's all about look at me and it's all about us getting likes. So we're so into the individualistic side of ourselves. No, nope, it's not cool to even have a job. Think about it. You can go to some people's Facebook page and you would think they don't work for anybody, that they're not a part of any team because everything is about them. So it's a look at me generation, and this has created a mindset that says it's all about me. A person whose attitude reflects it's all about me obviously doesn't feel like they need a team. Having a team creates a community. When you don't have a community, you are disconnected from the world. Look, you can be as powerful and as strong, as creative, even as intelligent as anybody in the world. But if you don't have a team, if you don't have a good team, people that you can rely on, people that you can pass the information on to, people who will work to help your dream come true, you won't accomplish much in this world. It's great to be an individual, but you also have to have a community and you have to have a team. It says here, the individualistic mentality is the opposite of what it takes to be successful. To achieve high levels of change and success, you will need that team. None of your goals can be accomplished without a team. And when you can't accomplish your goals, it leads to pain. So that's where the equation comes in. The individuality will lead to pain because you won't be able to accomplish the goals that you want. So again, let's go back to our basic, our basic definition or a basic example of it. You're working in a goal or you're working, excuse me, you're working in a job that you don't like. You're working behind that counter. You don't want to be there. So when someone comes in and they give you a little bit of resistance or disrespect, you go all off. Why? Because your goals are not being accomplished. Why? Because even if you are the most talented individual, you don't have a team or community behind you. So now you're stuck in a situation that only causes you pain. All right. Last part about that. Additionally, the individualistic mindset that leads people to commit crimes, cheat on tests, disrespect their relationships, and other negative behavior all comes from that whole attitude that is only about me. If you just take the time to say, hey, you know what, this is another person, or there's somebody at stake, there's somebody's feelings who may be affected by my actions. Maybe someone's life will be affected by my actions. If I take this purse or if I steal from this business, 
somebody somewhere will be affected by it. It's so funny. I had a friend who mentioned, you know what? There are certain stores, they don't care who steals. They want you to come in and steal little things that are sitting around. I said, come on now, does that make any sense? Now, as a smart business, they may already make, you know, accommodations for the fact that something's going to be stolen. So they already put their inventory together knowing that, okay, there's about a five to 10% shrinkage. And that's a lot. But they're not walking in every day while they turn on their lights and paying their bills saying, well, we hope people come in and steal today because eventually that will trickle down to somebody not having a job. So when you commit a crime, you are creating a situation where somebody else is going to be hurt by that. But it all boils down to you feeling that you're more important than that other person. And you're not. None of us are. We're a community and we will grow as a community. And the more you gain on that individualistic attitude, I'm telling you, the more you're going to lose. So, yeah, you may win over here, but you're going to lose tomorrow when somebody does the same thing to you. So, yeah, you may get over on somebody with a little hustle on this side. But again, later on down the line, somebody's going to hustle you. So the key in this regard is remember, it's not all about you. It's about the community because that individualistic attitude will lead to pain. Number three, passion, attachment as a cause of pain. Passion can lead to pain. The root of passion is suffering. So I'm not saying passion is, is not a good thing to have. Anybody that's great at anything has a certain amount of passion associated with it, right? LeBron James, he isn't the best basketball player on the planet because he has no passion for basketball. But when I say that passion leads to suffering, best believe that brother suffers when he doesn't do well. Best believe that when he's injured and he's out of the game and he can't contribute to the success of his team, he's suffering. But that's an example of how passion can lead to suffering and suffering leads to pain. So if you are going to be passionate about something, you better realize that there's another side to that passion and that's called suffering and that's called pain. So that's not always a bad thing, but it's something that you need to know about. So let me go ahead and read from the book. Jeff interrupted Jay when he was talking. Now, Jay, I don't mean to be rude, but that's really confusing. How can something that you are passionate about cause you pain? Jay answered, that's a good question. When you are passionate about something, you are committed and totally focused on everything about that person, place, or thing. That total focus leads to pain in two ways. First, when all of your energy is focused on something, you work hard, like lifting weights. When you're trying to increase your strength, it includes the pain of pushing yourself to the limit. The same thing applies to anything that you are passionate about. That's the pain of the push, the pain of the growth. That, my friend, is the good pain. So yes, Pain can be good. But then the second thing you got to keep in mind is that when you're passionate and totally committed to something, you become attached to it. Attachment always carries the risk of loss. If you lose something that you're attached to, pain will be the result. And that can be the bad pain. So when you're attached to something, keep in mind that you don't own or possess anything for eternity, right? We don't even possess our own lives for eternity. There's going to be an end date, right? A begin and an end date to our existence here on earth. So the more that you are attached to something, the more we are at risk of pain. And I'm not saying it's going to be a bad thing, but it's something that we have to realize. Now let's move on to attachment. First of all, understand that not all attachment is bad. However, you should never fall in love with something that you can't walk away from in 60 seconds. I don't know if you saw that movie. 60 seconds, but it was a great movie and it had a great point that if you love something to the point where you can't walk away from it and you can't recover from the loss, you are setting yourself up for pain. Now that pain can show up in a lot of ways. It could be simply the loss of a loved one and we all have to deal with that, but it also could be something as deadly and tragic as domestic violence. Why? Because again, keep in mind, we don't control and we don't own anything. So if you can't walk away from a situation, if you're so attached 
to a situation that you're willing to give your life for it and commit a crime for it, that's dangerous. And I'm going to spend just a little bit of time being honest with you. If you're in that situation, you need to find a way to release. You need to find some form of help because it's not healthy to be attached to something to the point where you just won't let it go or so attached to something that you're willing to take your life or destroy other lives just so you can possess it. Because remember, the first principle when it comes to attachment is we don't own anything. You don't own another person. You don't even own that car that you spend all that money for every month paying that car note. Because the minute that it's in an accident, it's a total loss, it's gone. So if you don't own a car, you don't own your children, you definitely don't, you definitely don't own a relationship, right? You definitely don't own the relationship that you are attached to. So you have to be willing to let go. You have to be willing to walk away when it no longer serves you. I could spend hours upon hours talking about that because it's so important to understand. You will cause yourself a world of pain when you can't walk away from what you think you love. Because first you have to love yourself more than anything else. And that means you have to protect your well-being. And that often means that you have to disconnect from the things that you think you love. Going back to our book, when you can't have or you lose the things that you are attached to or passionate about, you will be led down the path of pain. And it relates to all of us, your attachment to the neighborhood, your friends, your attachment to keeping it real. Sometimes that will cause you a world of pain. Let me give you a story today. There was a young lady in my courtroom. And first of all, keep in mind, when you are in a judge's courtroom, you don't control anything. That judge controls the courtroom. They control how you act, how you dress, how much time you're going to be there. So you have to submit to the fact that you don't control anything. But this young lady on this particular day felt that she had the ability to complain about how long it was taking me to walk outside onto my bench and start court. And we began our hearings. And of course, my bailiffs gave me a little note and said, hey, judge, this young lady was very disrespectful in court. She was upset that you were walking out late. And she had a lot of choice words to say. And they actually put those words down there, right? When I had a chance to speak to that young lady, I let her know that I did not appreciate any of the words that she said. And you know, this was a situation where she didn't realize she just didn't control the situation. She was so attached to keeping it real. She started saying things to me like, well, judge, I said what I said. It is what it is. And I said, okay. I'm going to tell you what it is and I'm going to show you what I'm going to say is you're on your way to jail for contempt of court. So keep in mind when you are attached to keeping it real and you don't know when to walk away or when to let it go, it can cause you pain. All right. So let me go back to my book. We're almost done with this section. The better way to exist is to be like water. That's something that Bruce Lee used to say all the time. Water can form the shape of its environment, yet it never loses its properties, right? So you can always be who you are at the core, but you learn to move in and out of the environment that you're in. When you're in a courtroom, you learn how to deal with the judge. Deal with the judge in a way that it doesn't cause you to go to jail. When you are pulled over by police, you learn how to deal with the officer. Even if it's for just 60 seconds, Look to your left, give the officer your name, look at his badge number, write it down. And if that officer disrespects you, go hire an attorney to deal with it. Win by suing the, the law department, suing the police department, suing the city. But you're not going to win by arguing back and forth with the officer on the street. And I don't care how much you tape it or put it on Facebook. That's going to get you a few likes. Remember, we started with that earlier. Likes don't mean nothing. You want to win, right? You don't want the pain of just wanting it to be all about you. You want to win. Part of winning is sometimes learning how to let go. Don't be so attached to I'm a man or I'm a woman or I'm a black man and black lives matter. Yes, they do. But your life matters to the extent that I want you to make it home that night. 
sue the police department later. Win that way. So letting go can save your life. Letting go can save your life. Letting go of your pride for just a moment. Letting go of your attachment to that relationship. Letting go of your desire to be rich right now and to do whatever it takes. Or as 50 Cent said, get rich or die trying. Let go of that for just a moment. Take time to think about what really matters to you beyond this moment. What matters in the long term? A healthy relationship? Being able to go home to your family? Being able to make money in a way that you don't have to look over your shoulder every night? If that what is what matters to you, keep that in mind and act accordingly. All right. Aversion. Aversion as a cause of pain. Aversion as a cause of pain. Aversion is a strong dislike for something or even someone. An easy example is racism. Racism is a preconceived evaluation of others based on the color of their skin or their race. As far as we have advanced, you would think that these attitudes have changed or disappeared, or at least we thought they were gone, especially when we had President Obama, right? We're thinking, yes, the world has changed. But in reality, racism still exists in our world, on our college campuses, in our businesses, in our communities, even in our hearts. And that's an example of how aversion, a strong dislike for something, especially when you don't even have a, a true factual basis or an understanding, can not only ruin your life, but it will cause pain for you and for others. Real quick, this is important. I've been working on this formula for a while and I'll say it here and I'll develop it a little, little bit more later. But in order to deal with racism in America today, we have to do a few things. One is, we have to get close to each other. If I know you and you know me, and then I begin to try to understand you and under you understand me, that is the only way that we can get to the third step, which is to begin to love each other. So the first step is you have to get close. You have to get proximate. You have to get up close and personal with the issue or with the person or with the other race. Because as long as you're at a distance, you'll never understand me and I'll never understand you. Oh, those are white folks' problems. Oh, those are black people problems. So you have to get up close to at least understand that, hey, you're dealing with another human being. And then the second step is you have to seek to understand that other person. Try to understand why I act the way I act. And let me understand why you think the way you think. And then as we approach it with the spirit of love and compassion, that's the only way that racism will change in this country. It definitely won't be made by some law or legislation, but only by those three steps, getting close to the issues, understanding each other, and seeking compassion and love. All right, back to my book. Clinging, being clingy, clinging as a part or cause of pain. Clinging is when you hold on to something that is bad for you, something that's not yours, something that may be dying. When you cling to or hold on to what you should let go of, you are flirting with disaster. Let me give you three examples of things that many people cling to. We are clinging to our addictions. I am addicted to fill in the blank. It could be alcohol, drugs, sex, love, whatever it is. Anything that you're addicted to, it doesn't really matter. But as long as you're clinging to it, it's hard to break, right? So that's one thing that we cling to. We cling to our own addictions. I like to shop. And sometimes what we do is we, we dumb it down, right? So instead of saying I'm addicted to shopping or I'm addicted to sex, you just say, oh, I like sex or I like to shop. But whenever it's to the point where we're clinging to it and we can't walk away from it, it will cause us pain. What else do we cling to? We cling to bad relationships. There are many people who are in relationships and you know the relationship is toxic. Toxic. You know that friendship is toxic. You know that man or woman is toxic, but yet you stay there. 
And there are many reasons why we stay, but sometimes it's just simply because you don't want to move on. You're afraid of what's out there, what's next. But if you love yourself enough, you will be willing to walk away. And we'll get into that a little later. Right now, I'm just identifying some things that we cling to. Some of us cling to life, right? But not in a good way. We cling to life in a bad way, right? We cling to, hey, I want to live my best life. I want to party every weekend. I want to get a drink. I'm going to be at the bar. You know, that's something that really baffles me. As I look at social media, I'm all for people having fun. But what is it about sitting at the bar, turning on your camera, drinking and singing that that's living life? I mean, yeah, that's an aspect of life. You know, that's a moment in time. But is that what life is all about? Going to the bar and having a drink? I mean, I don't know. Maybe for you it is. For me, it's not. For me, it's about leaving a legacy and changing the world and, and making sure that the world knew I was here, leaving my mark on this place before I leave. So we're talking about the causes of pain. And just to review, for those who are going to study this, ignorance is a cause of pain. Individuality is a cause of pain. Passionate, being passionate about certain things and attached to certain things to the point where you can't walk away and you can't let go. Remember, that can be a cause of pain. Aversion, just simply saying, I don't like so-and-so because, I don't know, almost nothing. When you are just a person walking around with an aversion to things and people and places, that's going to be painful for you. And then when you cling on to things to the point where you don't want to let go, especially when you realize that the things that you're clinging to are toxic for you, that, my friend, will be a cause and a source of pain. So that's my session for today. Cycle Breaker Talk, causes of pain. And what I want you to contemplate, this is kind of your homework. I want you to, to identify at least five things that have been sources of pain in your life. Five situations. And then most importantly, I want you to write next to those five things what you are doing to come out of it or what the, what you know you have to do. So identify five sources of pain, what you are doing to come out of those sources of pain or what you have to do to get out of it. You know the answers, right? There's no doubt about it. This is your life. Take time to analyze it. Take time to move to the next level of your success and take time to be a cycle breaker. All right, it's Judge Dawson. I will talk to you next time.